coach. Um, are you happy with the way your team executed, I guess, the foul of three? Um, and the last. Yeah, the last, the last one. Yeah. Um, I thought that, you know, I get laughed at, yelled at, screamed at because I never called timeout. I never called timeout. My, my goal is to, when I die, is to take every timeout I've ever had into the, into the, the coffin with me. But the reason you don't is because so you can have them down the stretch. And I had enough timeouts that we could orchestrate that, and those kids, they perfectly executed. I mean, we, the big thing was we didn't want to get the foul. There were six seconds to go. You don't want to foul. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to foul at that time, and you want to get below three. So we didn't get anxious. We made, them hard, made it hard for them to get it in. We made them make a pass, and then as soon as he crossed half court, we fouled. The referees knew we were going to foul. And we didn't hack or, you know, do something stupid. We just fouled. And then we, you know, when he missed the first free throw, that changed everything. Now we had to execute not a tip out in three. So now we had to take everybody off the line. Because if they get the rebound and lay it in, we still win. So now we had to take everybody off the line and, and match up with the three-point shooters. And our kids didn't panic. They did exactly what they had to do. And, um, I really was pleased with the way we executed. We got the ball in. We got the ball to Duke. We had Bader and Duke there. They're both at 90% shooters. Uh, we had to get it to one of them. We did. And then in the, the last execution was, I, I thought Valentine waited too long to throw it long. I was getting a little scared. You know, I said, if Duke or Bader are immediately open, boom, throw it to him. If not, throw it to Raphael. He's 6'9". He's athletic. All he's got to do is touch it, and the game's over. And we did it. So I can't be any more pleased than I was with the way we executed down the stretch. You just uh, talk about your team's ability, regardless of record, standing in the league to knock off the league's best here at the arena this well, season. Well, if you remember, Paul, I told you that the schedule was the issue. I mean, we had to go out of the gate to Western Illinois and to the Dakotas, and we were going to lose. You know, I mean, we weren't ready. We're a young team. And I said that, but then, you know, if we could not stumble, we could still win this thing. Problem is, is we stumbled against South Dakota here. I mean, you know. If, if that game hadn't occurred, I mean, we'd be playing for first place. So it did occur, and now what you do is you reset your sights and you continue to get better. And we know that in February, I mean, we have an unbelievable streak going in February. We haven't lost in this building in February since 2008. We've only lost three games in February since 2008. And this team's got to continue to get better and follow through that path that Oakland teams have followed. And if they do, we're going to be a tough out in Sioux Falls. Okay follow-up, um, that streak that you talk about, do you think your players buy into that? Yeah, I do. I think it's the way we practice. I think we talk about it all year long. You know, we had a 45-minute practice yesterday. I mean, you know, we, we drill it into their heads that your legs are fresh and you can play. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's something we talk about on a daily basis. And obviously they do. Now, we could lose by 30 Saturday and you could say, ha, you know, we'll just, I mean, you're only as good as your last minute. And I'll tell you what, we were really good the last minute. In fact, the last four minutes, they only had two free throws. You know, and we executed and did things right. I think you have to give a lot of uh, a pat on the back to Joey Ashbury, you know, for a kid that hasn't played. He was unbelievable in the first half. And uh, we went with him instead of Raphael because that kid's just so big and strong. I didn't think Raphael was ready for that. And Joey, you know, he stepped into the ring and he threw a haymaker. And he's going to get to play some more now because of it. Going, going back to the foul, uh, are you guys of the mindset that you guys are going to foul most of the time in those situations, or is, does it depend on the ball handler, or what, you, know, you want it to get down to three seconds, et cetera? I'm in the mindset of winning, and I think the chances of somebody making a three are 35%. I think the chances of them making a free throw, missing a free throw, getting the rebound are way less than 35%. So I will foul on any time like that. Now you don't, the, the question is how much time? See, if you, if you do that with six seconds to go, they go down and make both free throws. Now it's a one point game, you throw it in and you go down and miss, now you can lose. So if we can get that time to below three seconds, then I'll do it. I'm not gonna do it with five or six seconds, but I'll do it with below three. And that's what I'm pleased with, is we could have fouled with six seconds to go. There was 6.8 to go when they threw it in. And we fouled with 1.7. So we executed. And that's how you win when your kids do the things you're supposed to do. Um, 
I guess this puts you now uh, in the NCAA record book as well with 500 wins. I guess they didn't give you the two forfeits. Do you, do you, cel yeah. do you celebrate it for the second time? <laughs> it's just a bunch of crap. That's all it is. The first time it was a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. To, we lost two games uh, by one possession. And in both games, this was way back in the old, old days. In both games, the guy that made the winning shot was the illegal player. So I think he had an effect on the game. So they told us th that we won. But they won't count it as a win. And then about six years later, we won the league championship, and a team, got f a team forfeited a game because of the same deal. And now that they counted that team as tying us for the league championship after the, after the fact. So on one hand, it counts, and on the other hand, it doesn't. So you know what? I, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, I don't think I, I could have a thousand wins, and I don't think it's going to help us against Nate Walters on Saturday. So I don't care. You got that, Tom? I don't care. You got any champagne left over from that night that you celebrated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, champagne. Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the bottle of Ripple and I poured it on my head and went, eh, 500, that means I'm old. No, I, I, I shook everybody's hand and I went home and went to sleep because I'm old. Was, uh, when they inbounded with 40 seconds left, you guys are obviously pressing for a steal instead of fouling. I mean, if they had kept it in the front court, were you going to let it play out or was, were you going to foul eventually there? We were only going to foul if Borkland got the ball. If Borkland gets the ball, we're going to foul. I think what happened, is that where we got the steal? Yeah. Okay. Like I, could, I can't remember. I, I remember we had a chance to take the lead and Bader missed a wide open shot. We ran a quick hitter for him, he got wide open and missed it. And they got the rebound, that's when we got the steal going down the other. Yeah. No, we, we were only going to foul because there's five second difference, yeah. I think. Yes, yes. Uh, only if Borkland got the ball. Or 23. The freshman, we were going to make the freshman make. It was a one-point game, so I didn't know if the freshman could make two. And even then, the way we shoot the three, we could tie it. So, but I wasn't going to put Ryder or, or uh, Alexander at the line. There's no way. Even though he, he had a bad free throw night, he'd have made them what they counted. Man, that kid's good. Oh, is he good tonight. After Petros picked up his fourth ball, I could hear you say, that's a game changer. You were saying that. I believe you were saying that to one of the officials. Um, obviously, come out came out with a victory, but did you have to change things up down the stretch there? It was a game changer. It got me to take him out, and we won. <laughs> no, it was a game changer because, first of all, it, a, it was not a good call. All right, and I don't know. Can I get in trouble for that? In my opinion, the guy threw the ball out of bounds, and he bailed. You know, but it was called. It was also Petros's fourth, and there was also like eight minutes to go in the game, right? So now you change the game. I mean, I'd like Borkland to go out of the game with eight minutes to go. That, that would be a game changer. So that's what I meant by it. Mm -hmm. You know, a tic-tac foul that shouldn't have been called, in my opinion. And the film might show I'm dead wrong. You know, the film might show that. But in my opinion, so that's what I was meaning by that. And in no way am I criticizing the official or anything. I'm just letting the motion and steam off. How did you uh, retool your game plan, though, without Petros? Well, Joey had played so well in the first half. Don't forget, we took the lead with Joey on the floor. Mm -hmm. We made the big run with Joey on the floor. And I can't sit there and change things like that and not show our team confidence. I mean, if they see, see me panic, they're going to panic. So I said that stuff to the official and then forget about it and move on and do what we got to do. Is that the earliest Joey's ever been on the floor? No, he, he, last year I got him out there a couple times for short periods. Um, I think the Brad or not Bradley, that Illinois State game, he got to play a bunch because Kyle couldn't guard that Carmichael kid, you know. So he's had a couple games. Coach, talk about the ability to execute. You talked about it in the opening statement to execute at the end of the first half and at the end of the second half. Moving forward, is that something you're going to harp on? Well, I'm a good harper, so yeah, I'll probably harp on a lot of things. But they, uh, you know, we've just got to continue to get better defensively. Uh, we are we are challenged on offense at times. We really are, and, and my teams normally aren't. My teams normally can go get 85 at the drop of a hat. This team's not like that. So deep, we have to get better every day on defense, and they understand that if we're going to win, we're going to win because of the way we defend it. And I think this is a good game for them to see that happen because I thought we were really, really good at times defensively.
And that's a good defensive team. You know, that they're a good defensive team. They got size. They, they play a packed defense where they don't let you get by the basket. Our bigs had a hard time scoring in there. You got to make jump shots against them. Coach, on the other end, uh, news coming out today that Kansas City is going to leave to head to the WAC. Your, your reactions on that? Kind of odd considering the way that the, the blueprint of the league's gone? Yeah. I mean, I've heard that rumor. Um, then I heard today it was going to happen. I really would have to ask them why. I mean, it makes no sense to me. I, I mean, I, if you look at those teams in that league versus the teams in that our league, I think there are, the RPI isn't even going to be in the same ballpark. But, uh, you know, maybe they think they can compete better in there. Maybe it's a better fit for them. It doesn't seem. I mean, Denver's coming to us. Isn't Denver west of Kansas City? So Denver's coming to us, and Kansas City's going out. What, you know, that, none of that stuff makes sense to me, but there's got to be a reason behind it. I mean, you, I would guess they're smart people making smart decisions for themselves, but uh, it doesn't look that, um, you know, I mean, it looks like it's going to cost them a heck of a lot more money to travel, which is... At our level, the money's a big deal. So just start, start scheduling Alabama and UCLA like you. And yeah, and they don't have to worry about it, right? <laughs> Coach John Tottingham with WXOU Radio. Uh, tonight, Nate Walters scores 53 points against uh, IPFW. What do you guys have to do to make sure that doesn't happen Saturday? Well, you can't do that two nights in a row, can you? <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll just let him shoot. He's got a miss. I mean, <laughs> Oh, no, Bader came back with 26 after his 47, didn't he? Ah, maybe we better guard him. <laughs> uh, I got to watch that tape. That must, that's going to be fun to watch. I, when I heard that walking up here. It was just, you know, I heard they were behind by eight or something. Yeah, came back and won. So, um, uh, you know, he, Nate Walters is a great player. Uh, but you know what? Travis Bader and Duke Mon I got great players, too. So we just got to keep getting better and see what happens. It's February. It's our time to shine. Do you, do you feel like as a coaching staff now, it's a good thing that you guys kind of unlocked the guard combination and now kind of settled on this rotation? I mean, still changing up. Well, uh, one might say, what were you doing? Because I just was looking at this thing, and I just realized Poaches didn't play. And Poaches has been playing 15 to 20 minutes a game. So maybe I don't have the rotation down. I mean, I'm sure he's sitting there thinking right now, what the hell, you know. So uh, it was just Bass was really good, playing good. I think Bass guards that kid really well. Dante... We, we gave Bass a rest and put Dante on the kid. And you know what? Poches is really good on defense, and I'm sure when I think back and watch the film, I'll think to myself, why didn't I give him a chance just for a few minutes to get out there? Because, one, Matt's been playing well for us, and I don't want to ruin his confidence now. I don't want him thinking, looking over his shoulder. But you know what? At this time of the year, you got to win the game you're playing. And this was the way we went. Poches might play 20 minutes Saturday. I don't know. Your team's had a lot of success with this uh, backcourt pressure that you're putting on. Um, do you see more of that coming, or do you feel like well, you have the right mix of that going on? I mean, right now, it's it's a show and get out, show and get out thing. And one of the reasons we do that is because I, I play Bader 40 minutes, and now I'm going to have him running around for, uh, you, you know, if I've got him running around like that hard for 10 minutes, that's going to kill him. So we just got to pick our spots on it. I think it's... I think it was really good. I don't know how good it'll be against this team because Walters is so good. You know, I don't know. But it might be that we double him up real hard and he gets rid of the ball, but they all can shoot it really well, too. So uh, I don't know if we'll use it much against them. Anything further for Coach? All right, we're all set. Huh? Thank you. Next game against